more about that this afternoon, uh, this, this, this later on in this service. Um, it is good to see everyone here this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you are happy to be here this morning? Amen. It's okay. It's okay. I know it's hot outside. I, actually, it's not as hot as it was, has been, but we can, we can still give thanks in this cool building. I don't know if y'all remember last year around this time when we had AC issues in here. We got something to give thanks for, and I don't know about you, but I'm here, and I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited to see each and every one of you this morning. Um, This is the time where we recognize any prayer requests or praise reports. Um, My wife is out on a softball field with my daughters playing this morning. They won their first game, so we'll see if they win this next one. Um, um, I'm, 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 I'm... itching to try to check in and see what the score is, but I'm going to resist that temptation. Um, they had a close one this morning, but we see hopefully they'll be able to pull it out again and win another game and win another game and win the championship, but they are at a softball field right now. Um, any other prayer requests? Let's be in prayer for the Miles family. Um, they were on their way to church and had to turn around. Um, Sister Dottie is not feeling good, so you guys be in prayer for her. Any other, Sister Akima? Amen. 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 Thank you for traveling grace and traveling mercy for Akima. And we'll be in prayer for Angela, who's been diagnosed with cancer. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Yes, Brother Mike. Amen. Amen. We've been praying for your mother-in-law. Good to see you, Doc. Um, good to see that God is he- still in the healing business um, and, and healed you from your walk in pneumonia. Uh, Sister Sherry. I have a praise report. I went to the doctor on Tuesday, and this is my last time going. I don't have to go back anymore. Amen. He says, and he said, you know, we're finna, finna divorce now. And I said, yeah. He said, well, today is the anniversary. He All said, right. so you're five months in, cancer-free. You're doing well. You don't have to come back and come back and see me anymore. He said, I'm going to schedule you for your mammogram in September. Just come back once a year to get your mammogram. He said, and you're good. You're good to go. He said, you're Amen. good to go. Amen. And I said, thank you. I said, Amen. thank you. Thank you. Five months cancer-free. Amen. That was, that's a good separation. I don't know about you, but divorcing a doctor is a good divorce. Um, um, amen. We are so glad to hear that you have been healed from the cancer. Amen. Anybody else? Sister Nikki. Amen. We'll be in prayer for that treatment. If that's how God wants to heal you, we believe that he will. And if he doesn't choose to heal you that way, he will heal you another way. Um, we just trust in God. Uh, any other prayer requests? Yes, Sister Vicki. We'll be in prayer for, your, uh, for a good outcome on that report. On that review, Brother Ray. Amen. 
pray for, pray for the, uh, traveling grace and traveling mercy. Sister Nikki, you have something else? Amen. Amen. That is great um, that Khalil be starting pre-K. Any other prayer requests? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We want to give thanks, like the song said, not just for what you have done. We can always give thanks for that, that you died on the cross for our sins. We can give thanks for that, that you saved our souls. We can give thanks for that. But we also want to thank you for what you are doing. And we thank you that you healed Sister Sherry. Five months cancer-free. Today is her anniversary. Lord, we thank you that she doesn't have to go back and see a doctor no more. We thank you that you are already prepared a way for Sister Vicky. We thank you that that outcome is going to be good. We're going to trust that you're going to take care of that. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for Sister Nikki, who finally got the treatment she was desiring. Lord, we pray that you will heal her through that treatment. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for bringing Brother Mac back to us this morning and healing him from walking pneumonia. Lord, we thank you. Lord, you are nothing but worthy to be praised, and so we thank you. And, Lord, all the prayer requests that are here, Lord, we, we offer them up to you. Lord, we give those over to you, knowing that you can do nothing but fail. We thank you that Khalil is starting pre-K. We ask that you bless him and bless his family. Let, him, let that be the avenue to help him continue to come out of his shell and begin to speak as you will have him to speak. Lord, we thank you for all of the people that are here this morning and the prayer requests that were said that weren't mentioned, but, but we know that uh, are in, on their hearts. We pray for traveling grace and traveling mercy for Brother Raymond and Sister Vicky's daughter and granddaughter. Lord, we pray for Brother uh, Malik, who's not feeling well. We thank you that he's here, but Lord, we ask that you just continue to touch his body. And, Lord, we thank you for uh, my wife, who is not feeling well, actually, too. And we just ask that you touch her and heal her body. And we ask that you just continue to be with us, New Creation, as a church family. We ask that you just continue to grow us together, grow us closer together as a family does. Lord, we grow. We pray that we can become more and more like the family you desire us to be. And when we commit to that, Lord, we know that we can impact this city, this neighborhood, this country, this world for you. And Lord, we pray and trust that you will take care of all the things that we have, all the issues we have. We know that you're going to work out the fellowship hall. We know that you're going to provide for that. We know that you're going to take care of that. And so, Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do and how you're going to provide for the fellowship hall. And Lord, we pray now that you just continue to bless us throughout this service. Let it be pleasing in your sight. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, I have no announcements um, besides the normal uh, no fourth Sunday fellowship until the fellowship hall gets going. But um, we are just thanking um, God for you and thanking you for your giving. Lord, We uh, usually churches see a, a drop in, in the summertime when when summer hits because of traveling and people taking vacations and they're not here to give. But you have been faithful. And I just want to say thank you for being faithful in your giving. You always give. You give, and I never have to worry about your giving. You always give, and we always have enough to be able to take care of the things we need to take care of. And so we just um, thanking. I just want to I just want to publicly thank everybody. Uh, we reached the service time in our service where we continue to worship God with our giving. There are five ways you can give. For those online, you can give via mail. You can give via our website. You can also text to give as well as cash out and the offering plate. So however the Lord leads you to give, Lord, we um, thank you for in advance for what you will do. And we thank you for how you continue to worship God through your giving. And so the ushers will lead us in our offering. <laughs>
please stand? creation we have reached another Sunday and uh, the Lord has led me to continue to stay in the book of Psalms uh, kind of like the idea of being summer in the Psalms um, um, we on uh, last week talked about Psalms 103 and I, I pray it was a blessing for you I pray that you got a chance to meditate on that this morning we're going to be in Psalms 30 Psalms 34. Now, unfortunately, I apologize for you. I'm going to venture away from the NIV this morning. It's just something about the King James Version that, that just, I, I, especially with the Psalms, I think the King James Version, it's actually going to be the New King James Version, but I feel like the New King James Version, they tried to stay true to the rhythmic tension of the of the text. Now we talked about this last week. Uh, um, Hebrew Psalms, Hebrew poetry is what we have in the Psalms. And with Hebrew poetry, Hebrew poetry is not a rhyming poetry. It's a it's a thought driven poetry. And and what we see in in there's three different ways you can interpret it. One is where the first line is stated, and then the second line either is the opposite of what was stated, or it's the um, it's synonymous. It means it carries on the thought, and it, it builds on the thought. And then the, the third way is that the second line of the Hebrew poetry will push the thought forward. It is either supporting the thought that was stated, or it's going to get to a conclusion. Uh, I just wanted to remind us of that because it's important when we read this, how, how we can interpret it is um, through that. Now, Psalms 34, I just want to just throw this out here. It's, it's interesting because it's, it's an acrostic. What does that mean? An acrostic is, y'all have seen where you take your name and you put your name, you write your name out, and then you put adjectives to describe you that start with the first letter of your name. That's what this is. It's an acrostic. It's, the first, it's all of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, and they use two. This does. I mean, it's, unless you know Hebrew, this doesn't really uh, uh, mean anything to you because we have English, so it doesn't hit. Uh, it doesn't go that way. But if you were to look at the Hebrew, every first letter is a first word is the beginning of the Hebrew alphabet, and it goes in order. So, so it's just it's just something interesting that's that's a part of this text. Uh, when we pick up this psalm, it's written by, it's ascribed to David. David wrote this psalm. And if you see, right, some of you have a little footnote or a little note at the beginning that says, uh, a psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. Y'all see that, right? He it, 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 it's, it's some of you said when he acted insane and in, in the NIV it said he acted insane. You can go read about that in First Samuel chapter twenty one. But but let me tell you what was going on. David had just got a report that Saul was actually trying to kill him. His, his Jonathan, his own son, had came and told him that 
Saul is trying to kill you, and he was on the run. This is probably one of the lowest moments in David's life. He he knew he was supposed to be king, but now the king that's actually the king in in position is trying to kill him. And David is at the lowest of lows. And and sometimes I tell you, you know, sometimes we got to understand the 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 context and the setting in which text is written because I think that actually helps us understand the text and and so 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 keep that in mind David is at a low place David is at a very very deep dark place and 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 look what the words he writes he says well let's pray before we get started Lord we ask that you bless your time bless this time bless your word Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable unto you, my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Deep, dark place. David writes these words. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it. And be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Y'all, some of you heard this before. Some of you've sung this song before. Y'all recognize these in lyrics as a song. Uh, um, But David, he writes this. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Look, 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 look what David does for us. He he tells us how praise should be characterized. He, he says, I will bless the Lord, meaning I will, I will, I will uh, um, say good things of him. He says, at all times. And then it should be continual. He says, my, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. He says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. It, it, praise is, it should be at all times. Praise should be continual. Praise should be individual. He says, I will bless the Lord. But then he says, and, and oh, magnify the Lord what? With me. It should be corporate. Now, now, I know, I know. We go through things in life where praising God isn't the first thing on our mind. And, and we've got this idea, Let me, and I want to destroy this, this idea and this thought that praising God only happens in church when we raise our hands and lift our hands and, and we, we shout hallelujah. That's not praising God. That, that is a form of praise, but that's not the only way you can praise God. It, it, uh, praising God is simply being obedient to him and ascribing everything to him, having a deep faith and a deep trust. That no matter what happens, God is going to take care of you. That's what we should think of when we think about praising is trusting God completely. And so David at a dark place is trusting God completely. And he writes these words. I'm sure David wasn't in a cave with with, with his band of men raising his hands saying hallelujah. I'm sure he was worried. He He was scared. But he trusted God. To get him through. I will bless the Lord at all times. No matter what happens in our lives, we can bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouth. Uh, uh, It says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. That is a command, y'all. That, that's not just a suggestion. It's a command. He's saying, I need you to magnify God with me. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a little excited this morning because when I read this text, it gets me a little little fired up, Mac, because because there's some things we've all gone through and we see the other side of and we can magnify the Lord as a group, as a collective. See, we have uh, um, I, I, I read this book. It's called Reading Scripture Through Western Eyes. And it, we have a tendency to do this. Well, it's actually the the, the default tendency is when we read Scripture. We read it individually. We read it as I need to do this. We don't think about scripture collectively because we don't have a collective culture. We don't have a, a, a culture where, where we think about everything as a whole and think about everything as a group. 
we think about everything individually. But when, when, when David, David is not only helping us with this, I feel like David has peeked into the future and he's allowing us and giving us uh, um, the mode and the operand, uh, uh, the way to do this, Matt, because he says, he not only says, I will bless the Lord at all times, he says, won't you magnify the Lord with me? He's, uh, he's hitting both the individual and the collective. See, it's something powerful when we all praise God together. It was something powerful when Sherry got up and shared her testimony about being cancer free and we all got to say amen hallelujah thank you Jesus because there's something about when we all come together and that's what new creation we I want us to be I want us to be a church that stays and and praises and celebrates the victories and there when the defeats happen when the setbacks happen we're right there alongside of each other still worshiping and praising God and magnifying God with the person that is in need. Verses 1 through 3 shows us how we can praise God, how praising God is characterized. And I simply put the tag on this text, praise the Lord. That's the, t- that's the title of this sermon, praise the Lord. Look, look what verse 4 says. It says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Verses 4 through 7 continue this idea of praising the Lord, but David does us one better. He says, I'm going to show you why you can praise him. I can show you why you can praise him. He says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me. I don't know about you, but that's exciting to know that when we pray and we seek after God, he hears our prayers. He, he hears us. He, he hears what we share. He says, and not only does he hear us, look at the next part, and delivered me from all my fears. You know, he could have said all my troubles. He could have said all my issues, but he said all my fears. I, I, I promise I feel like he peeked into the future and saw that, that, that when we have anxiety, it's fears from things that we not wor- we're worried about things that may not even happen. We have fears of all these things that could happen, all these things that might happen. And David is saying, you not only hear me, you delivered me from my fears. Man, it, it, it's something to be delivered from our own selves. <laughs> it, it's something when God can take care of us and deliver us from what we are worried about. Because a lot of things are in our minds and, and they, our mind is being messed with and our mind is being uh, um, teased and tempted to think of things in ways that, that the worst is going to happen. And, 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 and he says he not only hears us he delivers us from all our fears it says they looked verse five unto him and were radiant their faces were not ashamed i i i I like the king james version but but there's another way this could have been translated and and i i like that even better it says that 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 it the verse five would say look to him and be radiant. Look to him and be radiant. In, in, in verse 5, it says, they looked unto him and were radiant. The, there's another way it was translated. It says, look to him and be radiant. What, what does that mean? You remember when Moses went up into the mountain and got the Ten Commandments? He came down and, and they said his face was radiant. It, he, he, he was radiant. He, he showed the glory of Christ and it happened to fade, but he had to put something over his face. It, 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 it says, look to him and be radiant. I, I started to reflect and think about what does this mean? And, and, and simply, this is, this is what I got, Matt. That when God is taking care of us, when we seek him and he hears us and he delivers us from our fears, when we go through these things, not keep it to ourselves, but, but we should be radiant. The people should be able to see us and see that something's different. I, I, I see what you're going through, but, but something is different. You were radiating the light of Christ. Look unto him and be radiant. 
Verse 6 says, the poor man cried, and the Lord, what, heard him. And now what he do? He said, not only did he hear him, he what? Saved him out of all his troubles. Uh, um, it's interesting that, that the word is poor here, but, but it, it's a reflection of the culture. Uh, uh, of David's time. When when you were struggling or you were afflicted or when you had problems, you were thought to be poor. You were thought to be outcast because God did obviously didn't like you or he was punishing you because of your afflictions. You know, in the book of Job, where, where Job and his friends, Job is explaining to his friends, I didn't do anything wrong. And his friend said, you had to do something wrong you, you, because God is punishing you. You had to do something. So this idea and this, this, this concept of being poor, of being without is, is this idea that God is punishing them. And, and he says, the poor man cried and the Lord heard him. And what? Delivered him from all his troubles. I don't know about you, but we all can be considered poor because we all struggle with things. We all have issues. We all have problems. And it says the poor man cried and the Lord heard him. The Lord heard him. I, I, I think we just need to continue to, to be reminded that the Lord hears. The Lord saves. The Lord delivers. The Lord continues to bless us. Now, now I want you to notice that in the text it says, Lord, L-O-R-D, it's all caps. And we talked about this, and we, I'm going to continually remind us that that's Yahweh. That, that's not, that's not we, 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 we use Lord Jesus Christ, and we think of, uh, um, we see Lord, I always think about Jesus. But this is talking about Yahweh, the, 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 the covenant name of God. And he says, the Lord, the Yahweh, the I am that I am will deliver us. But not only that, look look what else he says. In verse 7, it says, The angel of the Lord encamp, encampeth around about those who fear him and delivers them. He says, the angel of the Lord. Now, this is another interesting thing. The angel of the Lord can be interpreted many different ways. The angel of the Lord, um, it, it, it could be a personal angel that God has for you. We don't know. It could also be an angel that God dispatches on your behalf. We don't know. But my personal favorite and what text sometimes um, supports and, and I think supports more is the pre-incarnate Jesus. Uh, um, that's, that's Jesus before he put on flesh and dwelt among us. That's, that's what pre-incarnate means. He, he is Jesus before Jesus came to this earth. And, and so when it says the angel of the Lord, I just get excited because it says the angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him. In, in camps, it just just the image of, 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 of soldiers out there in war. And there's a encampment, meaning there's a surrounding, there's protection that's all around them. That's not just for them, that's for us. The angel of the Lord, we can, we can go one better now because he sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in us and he camps all around us and protects us from any hurt, harm, and danger. It says he not only protects us, he rounds us, he delivers them. Y'all see some of these same words? He, he protects, he, he delivers, he hears. He, he, this, this is the God we serve. That's why we can praise him because he hears us. And he delivers us. Verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. I don't know. Have you tried him? That, 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 I, I, that, Peter uses this text. Peter, Peter uses this text to, to explain. He says, Oh, taste and see. Uh, um, there, was a, there was a professor that had an apple, and, and he put it on the thing. and says, can anybody tell me what this apple tastes like? And nobody could say what the apple truly tastes like. They could tell from, from remembering what the apple tastes like, but they couldn't tell them exactly what the apple tastes like. And he said, how would you know what the apple tastes like? You got to what? Taste and see. Some of us got to, we, we, we need to be reminded that we just need to step out on faith. We, we, we need to step out on faith. We, we need to try him. 
and, and see that he's going to be good to us. He, oh, taste and see. We, we don't need to sit back and wait to figure out what the apple tastes. We just need to go ahead and bite the apple. Taste and see. But what? why can we taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. God wants us to trust him. When we trusting is well, how we praise him. Trusting is how we show our, 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 our worship to him. That's how you truly worship is obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God doesn't care about what we do. If we run around this church and, and shout and sing hallelujah, all he cares about is his obedience. Are we going to be obedient to him and are we going to trust him? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Verse um, 9 says, Oh, fear the Lord, yet ye his saints, for there is no lack to them that fear him. Taste and see. Fear the Lord, you saints. Fear, fear, this is this healthy, this respect, this reverence that we should have for God. He says, place our fear in him, that way we will have no lack, no lack of any good thing. It, it, it's amazing that God is so good to us that, that it says he, we will have no lack. Verse 10 says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. It says lions lack. But, but, and suffer hunger. Every, every now and then a, a lion goes hungry. But he says, but, but, you see the but. This is the second line is the contrast. It's saying, but we don't want for any good thing. God has provided all the things to us. And, and sometimes we forget all of the good things that he's done for us, all of the good things he's provided for us. And this text, and David is arguing, he's, he's urging these people to, 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 to remember what God has done for them. Done all the good things that he's provided, he's urging them to remember Verses 11 through 14, he, he switches it up a little bit, and he gets didactic. He means he's starting to teach. He, he says, verse 11, come, ye children, hearken to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Verse 11 says, um, verse 12 says, what man is he who desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep the, thy tongue from evil and the lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Uh, um, David says, come, listen to me. Let, me. let me show you how to fear the Lord. Let me show you how to fear the Lord and have a long life. Verse, verse 13 tells us, verse 12 says, who has a desire and love the length of his days, meaning a long life. In order to, to fear the Lord and, and have a long life, according to David, David says you need to what? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking God. Uh, uh, um, um, the NIV, I think, says something like this. It says um, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit or lies. Uh, 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 um, um, oh, we all been around those people. <laughs> oh, we all have been a part of, of people who, who speak evil, who speak lies. And, 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 and that's not the way that God wants us to fear him. To, in order to fear him, we need to not speak evil, not speak lies. But verse 14 says, depart from evil and what? Do good. Seek peace. And pursue it. Oh, I, I promise, Sam, I feel like he peeked into our culture today because y'all know that when people say something crazy to you, the, the response is always going to be something crazy right back. Uh, uh, but I would argue that David is saying that we should avoid speaking evil. We should, we should avoid those things and do good and seek peace. 
What if in those situations, when people come at us crazy, when people come at us, instead of responding, we sought to see peace? If we sought to pursue peace, I know it's going to get quiet. I knew it was going to get quiet at this part. Uh, uh, be, that's what he says. He says to seek peace and pursue it. Not only do you want to, to, to try to have peace, he wants you to pursue. It. Continue to live at peace with people. I, I knew it. I, I knew Mac. I knew it was gonna get quiet because that's hard. It, 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 it's hard to 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 take the response, or uh, uh, as Michelle Obama says, when they go low, you go high. And that sounds good. That that was a great phrase. But 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 sometimes when they go low, you want to join them right down in the mud. And 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 and. and, and David is telling us, seek peace and pursue it. Verse 15. Uh, um, sorry. Yeah, let's go. Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth them. And he delivered them out of all their troubles. David is, 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 is now comparing the righteous with the unrighteous, the godly with the godless. And he says, God deals with the righteous in one way. He says, the eyes of the Lord, verse 15, are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. David is giving us some what's called anthropomorphism. Where he's 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 attributing human-like characteristics and body parts to an infinite being. God doesn't have God's not like us, but but in order for us to understand, he gives him body parts like we have. And he says his eyes are us, meaning he can see all that is going on. And not only can he see, he his ears are open until our cry. He, he, he hears and he sees. And he, he knows what we're going through. He sees it. But not only does he see it, he hears our cries. We can cry out to him whenever, and he is going to hear us. He, he doesn't sleep, so he's always at work. And he's always providing. He's always doing something. Sometimes he don't even let us in until the very last moment. And sometimes he doesn't even let us in there. We have to look back and see God's hand upon the situations we have been through. It, 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 God is saying his eyes of the Lord are upon us. His ears are open unto a cry. But look at the, the, the inverse, the opposite of that. It says the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. It says the, I, the, the it's against the those who do evil. See, we think we think people that are doing evil are got it good. We think they're getting over. But 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 what it says it says the face of the Lord is against those who are doing evil. We we think that people who are doing wrong, we see we see people that that are are achieving really great successes in this world, and they they are just as evil as can be. Uh, uh, but but he says they will be they will be cut off. That 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 means they 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 they're going to pass away and their remembrance will be removed from the earth. Peter in First Peter quotes this text. Um, um, he he quotes verses um, twelve through sixteen. And if we go back and look at it, verses 12 through 16, what man is who desireth life and loveth many days, he may seek good, keep the tongue from evil and thy lips from the speaking guile, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and the ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who are to cut off. The remembrance from the earth. And, and, and in verses 13 and 14 in First Peter chapter 3, he gives us this conclusion. He says, who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? 
But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. Peter helps us to understand this text. He says, who's going to, 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 to harm you if you're eager to do good? I, I, I've never seen people do mean things or bad things to people who are doing good. They, I, I, I've seen some bad things happen to those people, but, but usually they're received well. Usually they, they're accepted into the community. If you're giving away food, people are going to welcome you in. If you are giving away stuff, if you're helping the poor, you're helping those people who are outcasts, nobody des um, despises those people. But he says, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. So, 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 so don't lose sight. Even if something bad may happen, you are still blessed. Verse 17 tells us, it says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and deliver them out of all their troubles. Uh, again, we hear it again. The Lord hears, and he delivers but look at the, the opposite. Is, I'm sorry, the verse 18 says, The Lord is near unto those who are of a broken heart and saveth them who have a contrite spirit. It, it says the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. We see it in Jesus' ministry. When he came to this earth, who did he grab? Those who were outcasts, those who were castaways, those who were were the poor of the not the religious elite, but to the poor and to the the needy. And, and Jesus's ministry is the evidence of just this verse right here. He says, "The Lord is near to those who are brokenhearted, and He saves those who have a contrite spirit." What is keeping us from praising the Lord? What keeps us from blessing him continually? What, when we know that he is one that is near to those who are outcasts, wouldn't you want to serve a God like that? that that's the God we serve. Verse, verse, 20 says, uh, verse 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Verse 20, he keepeth all of his bones, not one of them is broken. Verse 21, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them who trust in him shall be desolate. Look, look, let's swap back through this section again. He says, verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them all. Uh, many are the afflictions. I, 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 there should be some amens right there. Many are the problems for the righteous. Many are the issues that we deal with. But he says what? He says, the Lord delivered him out of them all. Verse 20, he says, he keep all his bones, not one of them is broken. This is an interesting one because this is a Hebrew idiom. Uh, idiom is like a, a, a saying or, or, or a phrase. And he says that he is, when he says uh, he keeps all his bones, means he doesn't bring about judgment. It, uh, um, it, it, it means that he, um, no bone broken is a, idiom for God's judgment and there's no judgment necessary when he says he keeps all of them it means there's no judgment necessary that means that that when, when, when Jesus this isn't some people might think this is a prophetic about what Jesus you know Jesus cross they didn't break any of his bones it, but it it's not it 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 was it could be interpreted that way after the fact, but I don't think David is looking prophetically into the future. He's just using a Hebrew idiom to explain that when no bones are broken, it means God is not passing judgment. And 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 and, and we see that, that same thing that 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 God doesn't pass any judgment and and there's no judgment necessary when 
in verse 20 because we are part of his and we are his righteous. Verse 21, it says, evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Uh, can I sum this verse up real easy? We got the victory. Uh, uh, no matter what happens, e evil can't overcome us because we got the victory. That's what he's saying. He says evil shall slay the wicked. The evil, everything is going to take care of the wicked for us. He says, but they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. We don't have to worry about them. Because God says they'll be desolate, they'll be destroyed, they'll be taken care of. In verse 22, the Lord redeemeth of the soul of his service, and none of them who trust in him shall be desolate. That is a God we serve, the God that will continue to take care of us. So I'm going to end it how we started. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, I, was, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes boast in the Lord, and humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let's exalt his name together. When we leave here, we should exalt his name. Not because we're at church right now and saying hallelujah, but when we leave here, we just need to have a deep trust that God is going to take care of everything. You saw it. He hears us. He delivers us. He saves us. And so no matter what happens, God is going to take care of us. All we got to do is magnify the Lord and bless his name together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you have hear us. We thank you that you deliver us. We thank you that you're, you, you are always there for us. Your eyes are always upon us. You are near to us. You encamp around us. Oh, Lord, let us just to understand this text internalize it. Let us understand that you are there for us. The great I am is there to provide for us, to deliver us. And he just wants us to praise him. So Lord, help us to understand what praise looks like. Not just a verbal hallelujah, not just a verbal amen, but, but it's a lifestyle that we live when we leave this place. And Lord, we'll give you all the honor. All the glory and all the praise because you are so good to us. We will praise you at all times. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's. Uh